first off, I guess I just want to ask Alan, you know, I know you've been wanting to direct a feature film for some time. Can you just talk about how you and your co-writer settled on, on this treasure hunt? I was looking for subject matter that, that, um, that, that seemed larger than life. And this, this is it. So Gator 301 has all that. So um, I really enjoyed getting to know the scavenger hunt of it all, the game of it all. And, um, and watching people solve these puzzles over the years, and uh, the lore that built around that, you know, where said that many people that saw these puzzles disappeared and were never heard from again. And, you know, so it became stuff of legend pretty quickly, you know, as we got closer to production, um, realized I actually want to direct this thing. And when I, you know, when I wrote it, you know, I, I hadn't done that yet. Um, and so, you know, I decided I'm going to, I'm going to take the, I'm going to take the directing thing on and, um, and I'm going to find somebody better for the role. And, and I'm so was lucky to have Jack Kessie. Um, and, uh, you know, and then, I, you know, I, I, I had a lot of fun with Agent Carver and, and, and playing, you know, playing a bit of the comedic relief. And so, you know, I got to have some fun in front of the lens, too. But um, but this was this eventually just became a, a fun vehicle for me to try to try my hand at uh, direct. Yeah. And then took- for, I was going to say for Connor, how was it working with Alan as a director? I assume it's got to be a very different dynamic than from when, you know, the two yeah, of you I, are on set. <laughs> I think, I mean, so everyone, I think everyone does think that like, you know, we did a lot of scenes together on Titans before we filmed uh, Cicada and we filmed Cicada very shortly after we wrapped Titans, but mm. Alan was prepping to film because we filmed both in Toronto. Um, but Alan was prepping to film Cicada while we were uh, like right as we were finishing up Titans. And so he and I didn't have a lot of scenes together because I didn't show up in Titans till really the end of season one. Yeah. Um, and so we didn't work a lot together as as co-stars. Um, so working together really did start um, on this project with him as in the director seat. And so that was a really cool way for me, us to get to know each other. And then we returned to Titan season two and, you know, we're getting to know each other as co-stars, but it was actually the reverse, um, contrary to what I think a lot of people think. And so it was a really cool way for me to get to see him um, firsthand. It was like, you know, kind of navigating the ship of something he's written and is producing and directing and acting in. Um, I have a lot of respect for him for even taking that on because like, you know, some people try and do two of the hats really like they'll, you know, maybe write and direct it, but they won't put themselves in front of the camera or they'll produce it and maybe be in it. But like all four of that's a lot. So I give him a lot of credit for juggling all that at once and then coming back for season two, you know, just like that. And Alan, what was it about, you know, Connor having to having her in the film as well? I mean, I mean, look at her. <laughs> she's, uh, she's, uh, uh, she's brilliant. She's one of the smartest people I know. She's smart. She's funny. She's uh, easy on the eyes. I mean, she's like the perfect leading lady. If, I mean, I'd be an idiot not to see if I can get her in the film. But um, you know, but one, th- <clears throat> one thing that she has that I think is um, really special is that she's. Uh, she hasn't concocted some sexualized person persona for herself. Um, and she's, uh, she leads with her mind, you know, I mean, she's got this beautiful personality, but, um, but every, every conversation that you have, I just, I know a lot of girls, especially in the business that um, they, they use that as their, their business card, you know, um, mm. their sexuality. And, and I just don't get that from Connor. I never have. And, and Gwen is a character that we really wanted to focus on making cool because she was smart um, and savvy and um, and driven and and just all the best characteristics of a woman minus that because it's just not the most interesting thing a lot of so from you know in my opinion so um, she she was she was the character already um, so you know just um, made it really easy. And I also, I need to ask about some of the more fantastical elements of the film, you know, when he's telling the story and, and has these embellishments like the NSA is dressing like sexy gun babies and <laughs> you at the end storming the scene looking like a naked Ken doll. It's just like, where do no, those I'm ideas I'm reading come this from? script and trying to understand that, by <laughs> yeah. the way. I remember reading it and being like, all right, I got my version of it in my mind. <laughs> like, what is this going to look like? Um, so... <laughs> That was, that yeah. Was. Um, 
You know, a lot, some of that was a team effort. I got to give, so, so, so I, you know, I had a version of this script. It wasn't very good. Um, I, I called my buddy, Joshua Montcalm, who's a much better writer than I am. And um, I asked him to take a pass at it. And he brought all that to life, like the, the best parts of the, the script. He brought it to life and, and it helped kind of unlock it for me. And I was like, you're right. This is how we make this a really fun action comedy thriller adventure how yeah. we blend all the genres and really he opened up the world for me in a big way um so i credit him for that and then um you know with the one of my favorite scenes is the one that you mentioned in the end where um the, the agents uh carver and sullivan um nsa agents that have been sort of forcing this whole they're the antagonist in a way they bust in in like bdsm outfits half naked and um at this more party, than half it, naked. <laughs> more than half naked. And uh, I, I was, I was telling, uh, I was at a production meeting, and all the keys were there, all the department heads, and, and I was like, guys, let's like, I, here's something that's on the page. Can we go further? Am I missing something? Can, can what's the most humiliating thing that I can walk in and do? And my first AD, uh, my my first assistant director, who who is um, just he's brilliant, um, and he's. Uh, he's an amazing director himself. So he's, he's just got, he's full of ideas. He, he came up with a, you know, the, well, well what's in the film? He came up, you know, he goes, well, what about this? And I died laughing. I don't think I've ever laughed so hard in my life. And I was like, done, done. And they're like, how are you even going to, can you do that? Is that, a th how do we even do that? And I'm like that, that, that I can figure out, you know, that the, the idea is brilliant. And, um, and so it made it in. So, it was a group effort. Uh, let's, how can we humiliate me as much as possible? And everybody was happy to pipe in. <laughs> and Connor, did it live up to your, what went through your mind when you- It was better. It was so <laughs> wild. And I remember, I remember getting to set and seeing the props that were being used. And I was like, <laughs> I couldn't have made this up in my mind if I tried. Like, this is the most, and that's kind of when I knew that like, this would be a, like, I was like, this is gonna be just entertaining. Like no <laughs> one has seen something like this and it's gonna be so like, and I think that's what those moments, like it gets super, you know, like action and serious and then it just like pivots another way. And <laughs> I thought it was hilarious and, and brilliant. And, really funny now, and just so unexpected 